Depreciation methods. Learning objectives. At the end of this module, you will be able to list the various methods which are used for calculating depreciation. Describe the two most commonly used methods for calculating depreciation. You know that the depreciation amount to be charged depends upon four parameters. Historical cost of the asset, net realizable value, depreciable cost, and useful life of the asset. Since the depreciable cost is the difference between the historical cost of the asset and the net realizable value, we can say that the depreciation amount mainly depends upon the depreciable cost and useful life of the asset. Further, the depreciation amount varies based on the method of depreciation selected. In this module, we will be learning about the two methods of depreciation, as mandated by law and enforced by professional accounting practices in India. These two methods are known as the straight line method and written down value method. Besides these two commonly followed methods, there are various other ways of calculating and providing depreciation. These include, but are not limited to, annuity method, depreciation fund method, double decline method, sum of years depreciation method, insurance method. A firm selects the depreciation method based on the type of asset, nature of the use of such asset, and the circumstances prevailing in the business. Whatever method the firm applies, it should always follow the same method from one year to another, as per the consistency principle. A firm can change the method of depreciation only under specific circumstances, and the effect of such a change should be brought in the books of accounts. This is because any change in the method will impact the profitability and financial position of the business. In this module, we will be focusing on the two most popular methods, which are the straight line method and written down value method. Let us first start with the straight line method of depreciation. This method is based on the assumption that the asset is evenly used throughout its life. Sunrise Enterprises purchased a truck whose depreciable cost is 6,20,000 rupees. This is its historical cost of 7 lakh rupees minus its expected net realizable value of 80,000 rupees. The estimated useful life of the asset is 10 years. So, based on the assumption that the asset, in this case the truck, is evenly used over its anticipated life of 10 years, then the depreciation amount per year will therefore be its depreciable cost divided by its estimated useful life. In this case, it will be 6,20,000 rupees divided by 10 years. This gives the amount of depreciation as 62,000 rupees per year. If we plot depreciation on the y-axis, and the time period in years on the x-axis, you will observe a straight line forming. As such, we call this method the straight line method of depreciation. As the amount of depreciation, in this case 62,000 rupees, remains fixed every year throughout its predicted useful life of 10 years, we also refer to this method as the fixed installment method. The annual amount of depreciation in this method is therefore calculated as depreciable amount divided by the estimated useful life of the asset. You know that the depreciable amount is the historical cost of the asset minus its estimated net realizable value. So, we can also write the formula as historical cost of the asset minus the estimated net realizable value. The resultant is then divided by the estimated useful life of the asset. So, if we substitute the values of the historical cost as 7 lakh rupees, net realizable value as 80,000 rupees, 
and estimated useful life of the asset as 10 years, we get the annual amount of depreciation as 62,000 rupees. This annual amount of depreciation, 62,000 rupees, is fixed over its useful life of 10 years. This makes the total depreciation amount over its life 6 lakh 20,000 rupees, which is the annual depreciation of 62,000 rupees multiplied by 10 years. This amount of 6 lakh 20,000 rupees is exactly equal to the depreciable amount, which is also 6 lakh 20,000 rupees. At the end of 10 years, the asset value will be equal to its net realizable value, which will be 80,000 rupees. Furthermore, this method is also called the fixed percentage on depreciable cost method. This is because the depreciation percentage remains the same throughout the life of the asset. The percentage or rate of depreciation under this method is calculated as annual depreciation amount divided by depreciable amount multiplied by 100. In this case, the rate of depreciation is therefore calculated as 62,000 rupees divided by 6 lakh 20,000 rupees. The whole is then multiplied by 100. This gives the rate of depreciation as 10%. This rate of depreciation is always calculated on the depreciable amount, not the historical cost. If you apply this 10% to the depreciable amount of 6 lakh 20,000 rupees, you will get the annual depreciation amount as 62,000 rupees. As the same percentage is applied every year, this method is also called the fixed percentage on depreciable cost method. This method of depreciation is usually suited and applied to those kinds of assets whose useful life can be accurately estimated and wherein the use of the asset is consistent from year to year. In this case though, we see that we can neither accurately estimate the useful life of the asset, the truck, nor the use of this asset. So, we can say that this method may not be suitable for vehicles or machinery. It is, however, suitable for assets such as leasehold buildings and so forth. In the case of leasehold assets, you will be aware of the useful life of the asset. Due to numerous advantages, this method is widely used in practice. The prime advantages are It is very simple to calculate the depreciation amount. and easy to understand and apply as well. The depreciation amount to be charged to the profit and loss account remains constant, which makes it easy to compare profits of different years. This method depreciates the full depreciable cost of the asset to its net realizable value. However, this method does also have a few disadvantages as well. They are It is based on the assumption that the asset is evenly used throughout its life, which is not always the case with most assets. In the case of assets such as vehicles, machinery and so forth, the work efficiency of these assets reduces while repair and maintenance expenses increase over time. So, the amount charged as depreciation and repairs taken together will not be uniform in this method. In fact, The amount of depreciation and repairs together will be less in the initial years, so the benefit from the asset will be more when the asset is new. On the contrary, when the asset becomes older, the amount of depreciation and repairs keeps on increasing, while the benefit from the asset steadily reduces. These disadvantages are overcome in the second method, which is the written down value method. Going ahead, we will now learn about this second popular method. Under this method, the depreciation is taken as a fixed percentage on the book value of the asset. The book value of the asset refers to the value arrived at from the historical cost minus depreciation till date. For example, the historical cost of Sunrise Enterprises truck is 7 lakh rupees. Let us consider depreciation on this 
at a fixed percentage of, say, 20%. The depreciation amount for the first year will be arrived at as the historical cost, 7 lakh rupees, minus depreciation for the first year, which is 1 lakh 40,000 rupees. This gives the closing book value, or written down value, of the asset at the end of the first year as 5 lakh 60,000 rupees. Similarly, the depreciation amount for the second year will be calculated at 20% on the book or written down value at the beginning of the second year. In this case, the depreciation for the second year will therefore be 20% on the opening book value of the year, which is 5 lakh 60,000 rupees. This gives the depreciation amount of the second year as 1 lakh 12,000 rupees and the closing book value as 4 lakh 48,000 rupees. Similarly, the depreciation amount of the third year is calculated at the rate of 20% on 4 lakh 48,000 rupees, giving an amount of 89,600 rupees. In this way, the depreciation amount is calculated for the remaining years up to the originally recorded life of the asset. You will observe that depreciation is calculated at a predetermined percentage, in this case 20%, on the opening book value or written down value of the asset. As such, this method is referred to as the written down value method. Furthermore, you will observe that the calculated depreciation amount for the first year is 1 lakh 40,000 rupees. For the second year, it is 1 lakh 12,000 rupees. For the third year, it is 89,600 rupees, and so on. The amount of depreciation reduces year after year in this method. That is why we also call this method the reducing installment method, or diminishing balance method. Under this method, a higher amount is charged as depreciation in the initial years, which then steadily reduces over the years. This method is based on the assumption that the benefit from the asset will be greater in the initial years, when the asset is new, and that this benefit will then steadily reduce in later years, as the asset becomes older. Now, a question arises as to how does one decide or arrive at the predetermined percentage of depreciation. The rate of depreciation under this method is calculated using the following formula. 1 minus the nth root of s divided by c. The resultant is then multiplied by 100. Let us apply this formula to our example and calculate the rate of depreciation. Here, n refers to the estimated useful life of the asset, which in this case is 10 years. S refers to the net realizable value, scrap value, or salvage value of the asset at the end of its life. Here, it is 80,000. Further, C refers to the historical cost of the asset, which is 7 lakh rupees. By putting the values into the formula, we get the rate of depreciation in this case as approximately 19.5%. So, the rate of depreciation you can apply on the book value of the asset here is 19.5% every year. You have seen that we have already applied 20%, which is close to 19.5%, as calculated. This method of depreciation is usually suited and applied to those kinds of assets which generally attract increasing repair and maintenance expenses over time, and where the obsolescence rate is high. So, this method is extremely suitable for assets like machinery and vehicles. Going on, let us focus on some of the advantages of this method. The prime advantages are... This method is based on the assumption that the amount of the benefit from the asset will be more for the business in the initial years, when the asset is new, and that this benefit will steadily reduce over time, as the asset becomes older. This assumption is more realistic in nature. 
the income tax law recognizes this method for tax purposes. As a higher amount of depreciation is charged in the initial years, the loss due to obsolescence is reduced. This method absorbs a higher amount of depreciation in the initial years, when the repair expenses are low, and then lower depreciation in later years, when repair expenses are higher. This means that when the depreciation and repair expenses are compared together, there is an equal charge on the profit and loss account. However, this method also has a few disadvantages as well. They are Calculating the suitable rate of depreciation is a little difficult. Under this method, the depreciable cost cannot be fully written off to zero by the end of its useful life. This is because the depreciation is taken as a fixed percentage on the book value of the asset. However, as the written down value method is recognized by the income tax laws and the straight line method is not, then as such, the written down value method is more widely used in practice. With this, you have completed the module on depreciation methods.